Welcome everyone. This is probably the easiest sketch I've ever done. I put in a sketch for the uh, jet stream, a building behind and the tree. Pretty simple. Now more or less what I'm doing is just trying to lay in a gradated blue sky. You can see on the images on the left, the top one being a photograph and the bottom one being a small 8 by 13 study I did. And I'm just getting in the background sky, trying to get that gradated blue going into the sunrise colors. And this is just a quick thin wash more than anything. Um, once I start getting a tree on it, I'll start doing thicker brush strokes to indicate the sky in a little more, a little more richer colors. And now I'm laying in a tree, keeping it simple. Just a nice dark, this is the cool I'm putting in compared to the warm gray that I had. When in doubt, if you can't figure out the color, paint the warm gray and go from there. Just trying to get the silhouette to shape, and you'll see me adjust it quite a bit throughout this painting because if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't look right, scrape it off and paint it. I mean, until it's done, you can do whatever you want to it. More or less, just trying to get some smaller branches in there, trying to get the form, the feeling of the presence of the tree, really. Small brush, doing some twisting and wiggling actions as I draw on the branches. Keep in mind the branches don't have to be exactly that you see in your photograph. As long as it feels like a tree, it is a tree. Now I'm going with a little warmer value there. A little more branches. I never really stay in one spot at any given time. I move around. And now even my even a warmer value on that one. Darker and warmer. Going in some coolers, trying to darken it up. Oh, there I did scrape out one of the branches, one of the main limbs, put it back in in a violet. And uh, putting in a little darker sky in the top, moving down to the bottom, putting some color in the tree. And you can see I just, oh, there's another mistake. Not a mistake, but a correction that I'd like to make. I'm making make a little more green in there. And so in total, I think this painting was uh, three or four days. So maybe, maybe 24 hours in total, probably 20 hours in total get to, to get all this done. Getting in some nice loopy branches at the bottom. Just how they come down and come up. I really like that aspect of this tree, so I thought I'd uh, kind of accentuate it a little bit. And the beauty of this is what I really like is all these branches coming together, create all these small spaces that I could implement, um, that I could put in the sky value in as it gradates down. It's a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, a little warmer. Fortunately, there's been a glare in the studio light. I have to, I have to fix that. A little bit darker uh, branches. Just trying to get in that craggly old tree look. What I really loved about this scene is when I when I was walking down the street, I saw the jet stream behind the tree with the warm sunrise coming down. And as you get lower into the picture, you can see a little bit uh, a little bit cooler values as well. And I just thought it was quite striking. Now, of course, I'm not going to paint the tree as dark as I have in the picture because all photographs lie to you, whether they're in print or in digital. You know, the darks are too dark. If the lights are ever blown out, you'll never get them back. You'll never get to see anything. And so that's why I'm deliberately painting the tree a little bit lighter. It's probably around an eight value. And then I can go in and put in some dark darks where I need to. Now that the trees are starting to get really interesting with all those branches, for lack of a better word, puzzle pieces in between all those branches, which are the sky. Long round brush to put in really fine branches. And it doesn't matter if I paint over some of these branches and I have to put them in again. Um, just because I'm painting them doesn't mean they're a finished branch, I guess you can say. And the advantage of painting the sky over the branches sometimes, it, it creates that breakup. You know how sometimes you're looking through a tree and a branch will go from thin to thick and they almost sometimes disappear altogether. And this is the illusion it kind of gives when you paint the sky over the branch again, is it goes, it gives that variation of the branch thickness instead of just having a straight line or not a straight line, a hard line against a, a bright sky. Now I'm moving in, doing some um, adjustments to the sky. And so even though I painted the sky the very first time, as I put in the branches and create this mosaic, I pretty much paint the sky all over again in between all the branches, making sure I have a nice darker, warm blue value at the top. As a grade eight, it gets um, lighter and cooler until you hit the, um, the sunrise. And I had some of those uh, yellows and cool greens in that jet stream in the back as well. 
you get to the end and see the close-ups, you'll really be able to see what I'm talking about. Now I'm putting in some darks of the trees to really help bring it out, give it a little more form. Right now you can see with these close-up shots, what I mean by really putting in the paint in between all the small little branches it creates a nice impasto kind of effect. So I'm just making adjustments in between all the branches and all the tree limbs. And I do enjoy putting all this color within a tree because I do see it. And if I don't see it, the key here is if you're going to add a value or a temperature shift to something like this. Oh, there I go, scraping out another branch again. You know, um, probably the same one that I, that I scraped out initially. And I'm putting it in a whole different shape this time. I should have learned the first time. Now, going back, if you add a variety of color within an object, try to put in the colors and it's all in the same value. That way it gives a nice vibration, a nice dance within that object instead of them standing out too oddly if you change the value and the color at the same time. This tree really does go through a big transformation. Various areas get scraped right off. Other areas don't get touched at all after they're put in. I'm working now into the sunrise and you'll see me later and I will indicate it in the video that I do that the sunrise gets a little bit too much of an impasto. So I ended up scraping it off. And that's what I love about oil paints. When you scrape it off, it still leaves quite a bit of paint left. And you can really work with that. And that's what ended up happening. I'm trying to put in some cool violets at the base. A little bit of violets at the top where the sky, the blue sky meets the yellow. Working through with my brush, the good old trusty round, long round brush, create those wispy branches. Quite a bit of color in that tree now that you can see. A little bit of variation. This is an early tree and I wanted to make it feel like it's old and, and it's been around a while. So I gave the bark a lot of texture. Working into that, um, not only on the branches, but I was working on the uh, the jet stream in the background. Working again in the sunrise, putting some nice, beautiful pinks in there. The contrast with the violet, and you can start seeing where I start putting it in the uh, sunrise area. A little bit, a little bit too much of impasto, and I'll, I will be scraping it off. Trying to get a blend between the blue and the yellow of the sky. Just trying to get a nice dance down below. And I kept on working on that sunrise. I kept on working on it. Oh, beautiful. Now, here we go. See, I scraped it off and it leaves all the color behind except without excessive paint. What that does is allows me to work into it with a little bit of accent here and there. I don't have to be worried about gooping up the paint too much. Mod branches. And I did have to sacrifice quite a bit. I took out that tree in the left when I scraped. Took out a lot of branches when I scraped. But in the end, it all goes back in. Um, there's nothing that can't be changed in the painting. Even when you're finished, you can always go back and change it. Don't work with something you don't like, work with something you do like. So take a palette knife, scrape it off, and not start again, but start anew. You can really see the mosaics happening now with all those branches in there. And this is the, uh, the tree to the left is just a tree in the distance. It isn't a focal tree, but it helps fill in that space for the composition. The diagonal you see at the bottom, that's a uh, distant building as well, but that diagonal really helped the composition. Without it, I think it would be pretty static and you'd have a tendency to fall out, out of the bottom. Building it up, building it up, really getting those gnarly uh, branches going. I'm trying to get a sense of life, sense of movement in this tree, even though it is a static portrait. 
trying to get some branches crossing the front of that tree there so it just doesn't look like the tree or the branches are coming out the sides. Working into that jet stream in the background. Bringing up another branch coming off the left hand side of that tree. You'll see me later bring it up even farther because I didn't like how everything was, how it was working together. There I took out a few branches, scraped them off, put them in the new and uh, filled it in the sky again, building up that branch again. You'll see me work that area quite a bit until I'm happy with it. And then other areas I won't even touch ever again. It's kind of funny how that works with the painting. And I'm doing some scraping with my uh, back of my brush to give a sense of to give a sense of brand, brushes that I don't really paint. They're just scraped in. See me working this little branch there. Part of that tree. Decided I'll pull off to the left. And what these are, these are just branches that come up from further down the tree. Or it could be a small little tree in front. But you can see all the colors in there, the blues, the violets, the browns, the oranges. Oh, now the last bit is the, a little bit more dark to create a core on the tree to get a sense of contrast and a little bit of sense of uh, depth and importance on that tree. So if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If I've earned your subscription, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell. Cheers.